The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees, with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, Why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, Well, did I, see, did I say a prophecy about you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human traditions. He summoned the crowd again and, and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters out one from outside can defile that person. But the things that come out from within are what defiles. From within, a, within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, ignorance, folly. All these evils come from within and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. Nothing that enters from outside can defile the person, but the things that come out from within are what defiles. The readings today focus on the law of God and how we keep the commandments of God and what is the law of God. In the book of Deuteronomy, on the first reading today, presents the law and the commandments of God as something joyful. We hardly think of laws and restrictions as being the source of joy and graciousness for us. The book of Deuteronomy just states for us what this law means for us. That the great nation, the people of Israel, is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon Him? The closeness to God is, becomes evident by the gift of His law. Law as given to the people from a God who is loving. Because that's what parents do. They love their children, and because they love their children, they give them rule, law, a way to generate and say this is the right and this is the wrong, a way of parenting. The beautiful thing about this law that God has given us is that it comes from God. It is not a human invention. There is Roman law. There is all kinds of law. Uh, during uh, the season of elections, which is going to last apparently for a few months still, 
We hear a lot about the law in America and that we are a nation of law. What does that mean? Uh, it is something that we are very proud of as Americans, that we are a nation of law. And I think it is a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing to have. It's not bad. It is a beautiful thing, but it is laws that were generated by a culture, by a society like ours. It's different than the law of God because the law of God comes from God. That's why the book of Deuteronomy says, do not change anything. It's uh, what is given to you in your observance of the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I enjoin you, you shall not add to what I command you, or nor subtract from it. Because it's not ours. It is a gift from God. We receive it with joy because God is so gracious that He has given us law, the laws. We think that freedom is the, the absence of law and order, but that's not what freedom is. Otherwise, we just go uh, on our own without actually a purpose in life or, or a guidance as to where are we going. What happens for us is that we, we add layers to the law that God already gave us, and some of those are human precepts, which is what Jesus is preaching against in today's gospel. That people just may follow that human precept without the spirit of the law that is behind it. The gift that is given to us of the law of God makes us humble as well. On the one hand, we receive God's law and are humbled by it. That's why we abide by the law of God and the commandments of God because they come from God for our own good. They are, as it were, the instructions of life. How to live life according to God's will. That's why law is necessary for God. God speaks to us in two kinds of law, eternal law and natural law. Eternal law is the laws that are given to us through revelation, the scripture and the magisterial teaching of the church. When she speaks, when the church speaks as a teacher, as a maestra, magistra, the magisterium of the church teaches us there are laws and precepts Sometimes we do not like them, but they are part of the eternal law of God, especially those things that, that, that belong to the deposit of faith. The doctrine of marriage, for example. Those teachings are, are given to us. We cannot add nor subtract anything from what God has given us to the eternal law, especially when those same things complement the natural law. So God speaks to us in that way. We add, sometimes, we add laws to this, our own laws, and then we just follow the human precepts without forgetting that God's speaking to us, and that is a guiding principle. For us Christians, the people of Israel of the New Testament, God shows His law in a different way. In Christ Jesus, who is the fulfillment of the law. Jesus Christ enfleshes, embodies for us the law of God, the Torah of God. With Christ, we are united with Him, and we journey with Him, we live with Him, and we ourselves, through Christ, learn how to be upright people. Christ Himself shows us how to be human beings. The model that Christ gives us is the ultimate law, is the law of love, that He gave Himself to us so that we can have life eternal. This gives a reassurance to the Christian soul, the reassurance that we do not need to wonder anymore what the objective of our life is. We are drawn upon to the wisdom of God. Our generations ask many existential questions, such as, what am I? Why am I? How should I move forward in life? Those basic questions that people ponder in their hearts, for us, they have an answer. We are not ignorant of their answer, because the uncertainty has been erased by the law of God. The gift 
of the law of God. What people can say that God is so close to them? What people have received the gift of his presence? But there is a problem for us as Christians, and specifically as Catholics, because many human elements are added, and they lead either to the presumption of the so-called sense of triumphalism, to think that we are uh, masters of the law of God, and that we somehow can change it. Many Christians ask the same question as the church. What must we do? What must we say? The answer to this question comes in Jesus Christ, and they have to be bold as to clear any doubt in people's minds. Christ has shown us who the truth is, what the truth is, and he has shown us what man is. He has given us the law of the upright life. Who is Jesus Christ is the truth. In our society, we live in a relativistic world. When we think of our heads and the truth being inside our minds, and what we perceive inside our minds is what truth or what is not truth. The letter of James points out to this reality. St. James says, All good given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. God gives us gifts to us, and our response is to how we receive the gift from God. And that gift is the light and the word of truth. He will to give us birth by the word of truth. So, we are not wondering anymore as to what the truth is. But people nowadays, they say, well, there is no such thing as anyone possessing the truth. Is everything relative? Is there a truth that is right and that is wrong? Are we seeing the truth as a splendor that has been revealed to us, or is the truth something that we generate within our hearts and within our minds, and it is what we want them to be? People say nowadays that to say that anyone possesses the truth is something that is intolerant, that we should not tolerate or we uh, tolerate any objectivity to truth. Are things right and wrong? Is there right and wrong, or are we just making things up as we go? I'm posing the questions rhetorically, so I hope you don't jump with an answer right now. <laughs> but is there a right or a wrong? Is there a truth of the destiny of humanity, or there is none? Or are we just trying to figure out what is it that we're trying to accomplish and, and wandering in the desert, as it were? But in reality, no one can say, I have the truth. No one can say that. Because in reality, no one can possess the truth. We need to be possessed by it. The truth is much larger than we are. The truth is Jesus Christ, and he is the truth. We must be possessed by it. But the arrogance of our society today that makes us masters of our own life has sold us the idea that we have to be self-centered, that we are the truth, and therefore I have to defend my truth, my right. We live in a world filled with narcissists, you know, who do not to see the truth only as they see it within their hearts. 